My name is Professor Elizabeth Johnson. Um, I am very lucky to be the Dean of the Medical School at European University Cyprus. The, um, the aim of today's uh, session, the webinar, is to talk about the interview. Now, I'm assuming that the majority of you joining me today are high school students who are interested in applying to medical school. For those of you who want to become a medical doctor, today's webinar is about the interview. If you have any questions, please put them down in the chat box and we'll discuss them at the end of the session. Now, all of my colleagues and myself were frequently asked by prospective students and their parents and their families about the admission into medical school. And they all ask, how can I get into medical school? Or at least, how can they improve their chances in getting into medical school? There are a lot of steps to get in. And a couple of these steps are very critical. One of these very critical steps is the medical admissions interview. So let's take a closer look at the process. First things, obviously, is that you need a good academic record. These are the things that show that you've been preparing yourself. We look at your GPA, your grade point average. We look to see that you've passed certain courses. For example, you've done biology. You've done one of other courses like chemistry, physics, or math, and that you have a very good grade point average GPA upon graduation. There are other prerequisites that we look at. For example, in a school like European University Cyprus Medical School, the course is taught in English. So we look at your proficiency in English. These are very typical things. This is not our point today. You can look these up on any website for any medical school, including European University Cyprus. Two other important things, recommendation letters. Yes, we need recommendation letters from people who know you, who can tell us why they think that you would be suited to study medicine. The other very critical aspect is the personal statement. Actually, it's critical that we are going to have another webinar next week, next Thursday at six o'clock the same time, hopefully without the hiccup of the technical problem, about how to prepare a personal statement that lets you stay out. And one very final critical step is the interview for getting you accepted. Basically, the interview is that last big hurdle that allows you to get accepted into medical school. It's very important. And that's why we felt it was important to spend time to tell you how you can improve your chances of getting into medical school by improving how you do on your interview. So the big question is, how do you ace your interview? How can you do so well that you're accepted into medical school? To discuss it, I'm gonna go through a few things. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do to research and prepare yourself so that you're a little bit better prepared when you go in. I'm gonna tell you about the construction of a normal interview. What is it like? Who is there? What do you do? Then I'm gonna give you some typical interview questions so you can be prepared, have an idea of the types of things that they're gonna ask. But it's not just the interview questions. They're gonna give you topics of discussion. So I'm gonna give you some of these topics so you can prepare yourself. And then the last two things I wanna do is to give you some advice on how to present yourself professionally and then some last going away tips. So let's go to some of the research and preparation that you can do. There are three areas that you really need to be prepared for and you really need to think about and know about yourself. Hmm. Sounds kind of obvious and funny, but it's true. Most of the questions are going to be about you. The school, meaning the school that you've applied to. If you're interested in applying to my medical school, I think you should be aware about what we do and how we do it. And then the career. What do you know? What do you think about a career in medicine? We want to know that you've thought it through. Let's look at it a little closer. What to know about yourself. There are a lot of things that you need to think about, and you'll see these as they come out in the questions that we're talking about later. 
How do you know you want to be a doctor? What is it that made you think that you want to be a doctor? And how do you know that you're going to succeed? This needs some self-reflection. You really need to think through about yourself and what medicine is about. What is it that you have that you think will make you a good doctor? What are your characteristics? You have empathy. You are kind. You think quickly on your feet. You're a good leader. You're a good team player. What are your characteristics? Be prepared, the bottom line is, to answer questions about you, detailed questions about you. You have to be open. What about the school? Here, you need to do your homework. You need to know what are the school's strengths. For example, if you were applying to European University of Cyprus, you would need to know that we're very strongly oriented in simulation and skills. Our students, by the fourth year, they have pretty much down packed all the clinical skills. They know how to intubate, they know how to put a catheter in, they know how to do it. What about the curriculum? What is the curriculum like? How do they teach? What is their program like? For example, in our school, we have classes where there's small bodies, 20 students in the lab. You're working in small groups. What about the student body? For example, European University of Cyprus is a school that has about 40% students from all over the world. We are a mixed group. You'll be working with Germans, with Greeks, with Americans, with uh, people from Spain, with people from France. It's a global community with people from, from the Middle East, from people from Egypt. Be prepared. That is, be prepared to answer why you're applying to this school. Know the strengths of the school and what it is that fits your needs, fits your interests. The last thing that you need to research about is what do you know about the career of medicine? Here you really need to do some work and think about what happens after medical school? What kind of training do you need to do? Are you aware that you may end up doing four to six more years of specialty training to do your residency? What are the career options? What are the surgical options, the non-surgical options, the lab options for a career in medicine? What about research? What are the demands on the career? What will your lifestyle be like? And how do you fit into that career? That's the critical question. Based on your characteristics, how do you fit? Now, these three areas that I'm asking you to be doing your research on and preparing for will make more sense as I tell you some of the questions that you'll be facing in your interview. So for the research preparation in terms of the career in medicine, be prepared to show that you know what medicine is all about. Let's go to the interview. Let's talk a little bit about what a medical school admissions interview is all about. There are two types of interviews. There's the traditional type and there's the multiple mini interview type. Most schools use a traditional interview. Some schools now are using the multiple mini interview type. I'll explain the difference between the two so you understand what it is in a minute. European University Cyprus, we use the traditional approach. We feel that it gives us a better chance to get to know you a little bit more. Both interviews take some time. Uh, the traditional interview will take a little longer. What types of questions do they ask in the interview? Basically, keep it in your mind. There's two types that they ask. A standard question, typical questions. These are try to figure out who you are. And then the discussion discriminator questions. These are the questions that we try to get a better feel on your process of thinking, your process of, of deciding things. How do you work? And the way you work, is it fit to be a medical student? Are you fit to be a doctor? The traditional interview takes about 20 to 30 minutes or longer, depending. Usually it's a panel of two to five people mostly faculty members from the School of Medicine. Sometimes this may be supplemented with a medical student or even somebody from the admissions office. 
Questions vary, and you'll see some of the questions that I'm going to be showing you in a second. But almost always, the interview will focus on your personal statement. Personal statement, very, very strong part of your process of applying to a medical school, so important that we decided next week on Thursday, we're going to have another webinar about how to stand out in your personal statement. Two critical components of your process of admissions. Once you've finished your interview, the committee will then gather, will include the people who have interviewed you, and they will look at your grades, they will look at your other qualifying factors, they'll look at your recommendation letters, they'll look at your personal statement, and they'll look and see how you did at the interview. And the committee then will collectively decide upon admitting you or not into the medical school. The multiple mini interview is sort of like speed dating. Uh, typically, there's five to ten stations, usually about five or six stations. Each station is very short. There's one faculty, maybe two in there, but usually one, who will keep you for a couple, three minutes, max ten. And at each station, they're focused on looking at one thing, one of the things that we consider important for a medical student. They'll look at your communication skills, they'll look at your judgment, they'll look at your empathy, your motivation. Each station will look at something else and you rotate through each faculty member through each station until you're finished with the interview process. Either way, traditional or multi-mini interviews, we're all looking for the same thing. We want to look for the same thing in our candidates. There are certain aspects that tell us that you will make a good medical student, that you will make a good doctor. Motivation, how motivated are you? How interested are you in really becoming a doctor? How committed are you? How committed are you to the long hours of study and stress and the long hours of work that come later? What about you as a person? How is your judgment? How do you see the ethical possibilities that you'll be faced? What about empathy? How do you show empathy? What experiences have you had that can show us your ability to work in a team, your ability to lead? How do you communicate? Communication is a big thing. I'm not talking about speaking English only for a, a school like European University, Cyprus, that is English speaking. We don't mind if you have an accent and you're from someplace else. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the ability to express yourself to your patient, to express yourself to the parents and the families of the patient, to express yourself to your colleagues, be them another doctor, a nurse, or someone else. Communication skills are very important. And actually, you'll be fine tuning those communication skills when you're studying medicine. Basically, the interview is tough. It is a very rigorous and very challenging procedure. And it is the final procedure and the most important procedure in getting accepted to medical school. So now that you've had a feel of the things that you should do some homework on and prepare yourself for about yourself, about the school, and about what a career in medicine means, now that you know the difference between the different interviews, now that you realize that there are a couple different types of questions that they're going to ask, the standard and the discussion questions, let's look at some of those questions. Let's give you a taste for some of the standard interview questions. Now, the standard interview questions, check very briefly some basic things. Your motivation, do you understand medicine as a career, leadership, teamwork, and a lot of other things. Topics for discussion are a little bit more comprehensive. There are questions about your personal statement. Now you're seeing how important the personal statement is. There are questions about your experience, how you reflect on your experience, questions about your character, and some of them are pretty tough, and questions about ethics. Let's look at a few. Standard questions. Ladies and gentlemen, these are going to be asked in most all interviews. They assess your suitability to study medicine. You are expected, however, to be prepared for these questions. 
They're pretty standard fare. So my suggestion is after we go through them, answer them carefully for yourself and prepare and practice and practice and practice some more. Talk to yourself in a mirror, talk to a tough friend, practice saying and talking about these basic standard aspects that we're looking for. Questions, let's look at them. This question is almost always asked. Why do you want to study medicine? And it's pretty hard to answer without sounding run of the mill like everyone else. Like you care about people, you want to, you find science exciting. This is very hard. Why do you want to study medicine? This is a very personal question, very personal. And almost everyone, 99% of you is going to say to help others. I enjoy science. It's exciting. Okay. You need to make it personal. You need to make it personal so you can stand out. We need to understand. Say something that you experienced in your life that inspired you. What was that one thing, that one experience that you had that made you understand that medicine was what you want to do? Don't make things up. We've heard it all and we'll see right through you. Be real. This is why we say you really need to reflect and think. Almost always that comes second to this question is why medicine? Why not nursing? Why not biology? Why not biochemistry? Difficult. This is a really tricky question and you really need to think it through. And you need to think it with the previous question. Why do you want to study medicine and why not something else? Really important, extremely important. Do not downgrade the other healthcare professions. Do not talk negatively about nursing or any other healthcare related profession. Compliment those other professions. Show that you understand that medicine is a team activity and focus on the positive aspects of medicine rather on the negative things of the other careers that you're not interested in. Here are two other questions and I put them side by side because they're very common and they're about the same. Can you give me an example of a time when you have shown leadership? Can you give me an example of a time when you have shown teamwork? Now you understand why I say it's good to be prepared. Both of these questions are very similar. Here, you need to try to recall a time when you have shown these. It could be school sports, a school club, some other extracurricular activity that you're involved in. Focus on the skills the leadership skills or the teamwork skills. Leadership skills, how did you inspire somebody? How did you encourage somebody? How did you support somebody? Teamwork skills, how did you help the communication? How did you show that you were listening? You need to use very specific examples and not make generic statements. Actually, I would suggest using the so-called STAR approach, where S, STAR, situation, describe a very, very specific situation. T, task, say what needed to be done. Action, A, what action did you take? And then what were the results, the R? What happened? that was positive by the action that you took. And then make sure you tell us the relevance. Show us, tell us that you understand the relevance of the skill and the situation. We want to see how you think, and this is very important. What about topics for discussion? Now this is a little tougher. 
a little more difficult. Topics for discussion are called discriminators. We're looking for your weaknesses, your strengths, ethical dilemmas, healthcare issues, your goals. These are all the items that we put up in front of you as a discriminator. Why do I say discriminator? Because we're trying to assess your ability to approach an issue with an open mind, your awareness, your commitment to medicine, your ability to self-reflect. These are tough. They need to be thought through. The standard questions you can prepare. These, you just need to prepare yourself how to think about them. I think that two of the toughest questions in an interview are these. Describe a weakness that you have or describe a strength that you have. These are questions that we usually are able to define who is going to be a very good medical school candidate and who is going to make a good doctor. Both of these questions, you can think about the same, same way and their potential traps. Weakness, you might end up talking about what you're only bad at and not flip it a little bit to point what you're good at to help you get by with what you're bad at. Of course, in one interview, I do remember a student telling me that they had no weaknesses. And I think that answers on its own if we think that's a good answer or not. Now, when you discuss your weakness, the point is, is to be aware, to show that you reflect, that you know that you have a weakness, and then find a strength that you have that helps you overcome it. Strengths, if we ask you to give us a strength, that's also very difficult and also another trap. We don't want you to come off being so confident uh, and start bragging and going on and on. A good doctor is a doctor who is aware of what they know and they don't know, who is aware of their strengths and their weaknesses and have both feet on the ground. So we want to see your ability to self-reflect, to know who you are. And here we are again. Yes, you are going to be asked questions about your personal statement. Almost all schools are going to ask you to submit a personal statement. European University Cyprus requests a personal statement. The content of your personal statement is about you. It's a very, very important part of your application. It tells us why you're suited to medicine and what you've done that lets us know that you're suited for medicine. So important that writing your personal statement will be discussed next week, next Thursday, uh, on April 23rd at 6 o'clock. Know your statement. And you'll see that when you we do the statement next week, that it's very important to be very realistic and truthful about your statement. We have asked questions to people who are being interviewed about their statement, and we realized that either they didn't write their statement or they said things in their statement that they had no idea what they were. Be prepared, doesn't have to be fancy, once you write a good statement, to answer the details of the experiences that you mention in your statement. Not just the details, but that you've thought about them, that you know what it means, you know what it's about. For example, let's say some of you have gone and worked with a clinician. It may even be your parent, it doesn't matter. What did you do? What did you learn? How did you engage with the other people there? How did you engage with the patients? Be prepared to answer these questions in your interview because most definitely you're going to be asked questions that are related to your personal statement. Questions about your ethics. This is a difficult area. And these are very difficult questions, even for senior doctors. Why? Because in ethics, there's usually no black and white and no right and wrong. There's a spectrum of answers. And every situation is different and judgment must be exercised. So we want to see how you think. Key principles that you need to remember if you're given an ethical question, which you will most likely. The interviewer is not looking for the actual answer. What they're looking for is your thought process. 
What they're looking for is your thought process and your values and your abilities to reason. That's why it's really important that you don't give an immediate answer. You need to discuss the process that allowed you to reach a decision. Now, when you're given an ethical question, you not only want to give your ability to reason, but the values are important. And some of the values that we're looking for is that you're not going to discriminate between patients. That you believe that everyone has an equal right to good health care treatment. And that as a junior, you'll consult your supervisor. These are things that we'd like to hear, that we expect to hear from a good medical student. Here I'm giving you a, a sample of an ethical scenario. One of the ones that we use as well. A liver has become available for treatment, for transplant, and three patients need a liver transplant and they need it urgently. All three have been on the waiting list for at least three months and all will likely die if they don't receive this liver. Who are the three patients? The first patient is a 40-year-old mother. She has two children, and she was occasionally a drinker throughout her life and is suffering from liver cancer. The second is a 60-year-old man who suffers from chronic alcoholism. And the third patient is a two-year-old child who has a congenital heart disease. Now the question is, who are you going to give the liver to and why? Not so easy. The child, some of you may say the child, because you feel that the child is going to live the longest following the transplant. Hmm, maybe, maybe not. The woman, it's a good option. The woman has two children that she needs to take care of. If you don't give her the transplant and she dies, who's going to take care of her children? It's an ethical dilemma. Some of you may disregard the alcoholic. You should not do that. You should explain that you might decide, you might decide that the liver should not go to him if he continues drinking. Whenever you're given a dilemma, you might decide, not you would decide. These are very delicate matters and they require a very delicate presentation. And a good doctor is the doctor who goes to the colleagues to discuss what the possibilities are. A doctor who does not go to the colleagues, who does not listen to their colleagues, is a very dangerous doctor. A junior doctor who does not discuss with the senior doctors about what they should do is a dangerous doctor. So these are the things that we're looking for and the ways that we'd like to see you thinking. Ha, you knew this was coming. Why do you want to study at our university? This is asked by all interviewers. We want to know that you've done your homework. Why would I be interested in accepting you to my medical school? I need to know that because you are going to tell me why it is you want to come to my school. So here you need to do your homework. Why do you want to study at European University Cyprus? Is it the curriculum? Is it because it's a spiral and you're introduced to things gradually? Is it because of early patient care? For example, in my medical school from the first year, you get to have your first exposure to patients. Is it because we're known for simulation and skills training? What is it about the school that you've applied to that makes you want to apply to them? What are the strengths? Why am you interested? And the backup question to this is once you tell us why you want to study at our school, is we're gonna ask you, well, okay, why do you think you're gonna be a good candidate for us? which goes back to the first questions about the interview. The main thing is that when you're in the interview is expect the unexpected. You don't know what they're gonna ask you. We're giving you some general guidelines. They can ask you pretty much anything. 
Let's go to what may seem obvious, presenting yourself professionally. And I'm putting this in because sometimes it's not so obvious. Sometimes your message is not just what you're saying, but it's how you say it. The package, we're looking at everything when you come and see us, or even on Skype. Essential components of your package that we look for is your voice, your eye contact, your body language, and your overall appearance. Your voice, what do I mean here? Clarity, each word counts. Speak slowly. If you start rambling quickly, it means you're too nervous. If you're too nervous with us, how are you going to be the first time you treat a patient? Speak loud enough that everyone can hear. Practice at home, practice in front of a mirror, practice with a friend, practice before you go to your interview. With your voice comes your language. Don't use abbreviations, wanna, shoulda, what's up. Don't use slang like stoked, my bad, I feel you. And certainly don't fill your, your, your discussion with us with fillers. Uh, er, you know, okay. When you practice an interview, when you practice the things that you're gonna say, you won't be struggling to find the words. You'll show yourself a confident young person who's ready to study medicine. Eye contact. Eye contact is really very important. It doesn't just give us a feeling that you're confident that you can stand on your own two feet, but it's also good manners. I don't mean to stare, but I mean looking at the person who's talking to you, looking at the person who's asking you a question, and smile. It shows self-control. Medicine needs self-control. Don't forget basic things like shaking hands when you're introduced, hmm? smiling. Basic things that tell us that you have the full package Body language, mm -hmm. sit up straight, don't slouch, and don't fidget. When you're shaking your leg up and down and you're twiddling your fingers, you just show that you're very nervous. Facial expressions are really important. I'm not interested in you if you're not looking. Be involved, show your enthusiasm, look at us in the eye, tell us why we want you. Your appearance, it's part of your nonverbal message and you really do need to dress appropriately, even, even when it's on Skype. I can't stress it more enough. It shows that you respect yourself, you respect the people that are interviewing you and you respect the school. And the next day it shows that you respect your patients. A few last tips. Be early for your interview. If it's on Skype, make sure you're hooked up early. Like, look at me, I was hooked up a half an hour early and I got kicked off my, my webinar and I apologize for being late, but that was a technical glitch. Be there. If you're on Skype, you may end up having a technical glitch. And I was very lucky to have somebody on the other side from European University Cyprus who helped me get on. You need to be early, either on Skype or for your presentation, be there. You need to switch off your cell phone. We don't want to talk to somebody who's looking down at the messages coming in off of their phone. Stay calm, show empathy, kindness, relax, be enthusiastic, be honest, and above all, be yourself. Let us see who you are. And when the interview is over, don't forget to say thank you. Don't forget to be polite. The whole point of what I was telling you for the last short period is how you can stand out from the crowd in your interview. What you can 
prepare to do and say to us that will let us pay attention to you. This is a good luck slide. I really think that after this short presentation, this webinar, you realize that actually luck is not really part of it. If you prepare hard enough that you'll be able to, to ace your webinar, to, to ace your interview. And that improves your school, your chances of getting into really great medical schools, great medical schools like European University Cyprus. Now, in closing, I'd like to thank all of you.